Welcome to this presentation by the Micronesian Center for Sustainable Transport. Today, we will explain the framework for how compliance costs and revenues can be managed under the global strategy for reducing greenhouse gas emissions in the maritime industry. Under our framework, all ships that emit GHG will pay a flat levy on all their emissions. We propose an initial entry price of $150 per ton of CO2 equivalent. This price will be regularly reviewed and ratched upwards to increasingly meet the price differential with more expensive but non-GHG emitting fuels. This is the economic measure IMO refers to in the basket of measures needed for implementing their 2023 strategy for reducing shipping GHG emissions. The technical measure is a global fuel standard or GFS. The GFS sets the GHG fuel intensity or GFI for fuels that ships are allowed to use. The GFI is also regularly reviewed and increases with stringency over time. Ships that are not compliant with the GFS will pay both a GHG levy on all emissions and a penalty on all emissions over the GFI. These penalties are designed to incentivize compliance and reduce emissions. Ships that meet the GFS standard avoids the GFS penalty but still pay the GHG levy, contributing to the overall emissions reduction efforts. Ships that exceed GFS standards, known as GFS over compliant, also avoid the GFS penalty but continue to pay the GHG levy on any GHG emissions. These ships may also be eligible for a limited reward subsidy for near zero GHG energy use dependent on their technology and fuel choice. Ships that have zero GHG emissions will always be GFS over compliant and pay neither the GFS penalty nor the GHG levy. These ships will also be eligible for a limited reward subsidy for near zero GHG energy use. The funds collected from GHG levies and GFS penalties are pooled together to create a significant revenue stream. This revenue is crucial for funding various initiatives needed to achieve the objectives of the IMO 2023 strategy, namely promoting the energy transition of shipping, incentivizing the fleet and contributing to a level playing field and a just and equitable transition. The principle of polluters pay directs that revenues are used to mitigate the industry's pollution at source and make reparation for the damages caused by the pollution. These revenues are allocated to five core uses to ensure a comprehensive approach to addressing emissions and supporting affected communities. Administration. Common to all revenue collections and disbursement is the administration cost of revenue collection. Management, monitoring, evaluation and review. Active mitigation efforts require heavy subsidization of research and development of new technologies and fuels and their equitable global deployment. Active reparation addresses environmental adaptation, climate and labor response via established fund managers. Passive reparation, disproportionate negative impact compensation. Passive reparation compensates states that incur disproportionate negative costs from the impacts IMO measures. Passive mitigation. Our disbursement model includes a limited fee bait mechanism to reward over compliant ships that employ eligible long run technologies and alternative fuels. The fee bait purpose is to stimulate early uptake for long run solutions and is only applied for a fixed term in order to establish a core market. This structured approach ensures that the maritime industry can equitably transition to full decarbonization while supporting those affected by climate change. By understanding and supporting these mechanisms, we can collectively work towards a greener future for our oceans and our planet.